Hello aviation enthusiasts, I'm Mike, the Director of Maintenance for E&J Aviation. I'm an ANP IA CFI CFII. Today I'm going to show you around the pre-flight actions for your Piper Warrior. So the first thing you want to do, have the checklist in hand. Power up your aircraft. In our case, here at D&J, we put the keys on the dash. Therefore, anyone that comes near the aircraft knows it's safe, the mags are not hot. So that said, following the checklist, battery on, all your lights on, PDOT heat on, then we'll get out and do our walk around and check those things. So following the checklist, doing our walk around while the battery's still on, you see your position light and your anti-collision light. Pressing forward, following the aircraft, all the way around. The keys are on the dash, so I know the prop is safe. Landing light. Pressing forward. Your stall horn and listen. It works. Your P dot tube. It is warm. Position light. Anti collision lights. Check. The beacon is on. and your white nav tail light. Once you get the lights inspected, shut off your battery. Conserve that energy for start. So how I conduct the exterior portion of my pre-flight, it's called flow. Now, always follow the POH in the direction that it gives you. For myself, I start here and I finish here. As you can see, the flaps have been dropped. Raise and lower to ensure there's not much play. The supporting hardware on the three points your ailerons, if this goes up, the yoke, as you know, is over like so, verified. And I look at the other aileron and it should be down. While this is here, I'm holding it up. I'm going to feel the control rod underneath to ensure it's somewhat tight. You don't want the control rod bouncing around and whatnot. Very important, again, hold the aileron up when you stick your hand in the pinch joint. Now that my hands are clear, I inspect the piano hinges and the supporting hardware to ensure the aileron is good to go. Pressing forward your wingtips. It is plastic, so handle with care. I'm a touch kind of guy, meaning I like to move the items to ensure that they're on and they're secure. Visual inspections are great, but it's hard to determine if something's loose based off of just the visual inspection. These aircraft are very old. Don't put much weight on the plastic as it might crack. Pressing forward, leading edge of the wing, bird strikes, dents, whatever it might be. You're checking for rivet lines. Looking down the wing for wrinkled skin and looking under the wing for supporting hardware. Ensure all your supporting hardware is present. All right, as you get under the wing to sump your fuel, you take your jar on your sump port, you push it up, drain a bit of fuel out, lower it, and what I do is I grab a paper towel and just dab it so it doesn't drop on the tire. I look for water. I don't see any water present. Now here's something important. Have your instructor put a little water in the glass so you can see what it looks like when you do have water in your fuel. A lot of students that I work with, they've never seen water in the fuel and it's always good to put a little in there so they know what to look for. While you're under here, you're checking for the strut distance, all the supporting hardware, your brake pads on your caliper, you want to ensure that there's a good amount of thickness to it. If it is low, ensure it gets written up accordingly the tire tread, and overall condition. If you ever come to a brake or a wheel and you notice there's some sort of fluid underneath it, grab a maintenance tech. Once the inspection is complete below and you have your fuel that is clean, pour it back in your fuel tank. If it's not clean, there's a fuel disposal area at, your, at the shop where your aircraft is kept. In our case, our fuel is clean. Use caution not to spill it on the paint, and if you do, just get some water on a rag and wipe it up. 
ensure that your cap is on and secure. As you make your way down the wing and you've inspected your fuel, you poured it back in the tank once you determined it was clean, it's time to inspect the engine compartment. Based off the POH, it'll determine how much oil you should have in your aircraft. For myself, I raise it out, but I don't pull it all the way out, and I take a look. This aircraft is currently at seven ports. Based off the POH, seven ports is within limits. Here's an important note. When you screw on the oil cap, don't over tighten it. As you are in the engine compartment, I'm a big advocate for smelling the engine bay if it's an overwhelming smell of fuel or burnt oil or um, whatever might have gotten there, a bird or whatever, um, you'll be able to smell it. Looking for chafing wires, oil leaking from your valve caps or your rocker box caps, security at the mags, the oil filter, just an overall inspection. And again, I'm one to touch things to determine everything's tight. After your engine is inspected, very important to close it and lock it. Make that a habit. There's nothing worse than starting your motor, realizing that your nacelle isn't latched and having to stop the motor, do the walk of shame to get out, to fasten it back. As I come down here, looking at the nose strut, you want to ensure that the distance is proper. Once again, you can get those distances out of the POH. Three and a half inches is the nose, what we like to keep ours. As I'm down here inspecting, I look for excessive amount of fluid, because this is hydraulic fluid in the strut, filled with nitrogen. The overall condition of the tire, these three bolts on the X axis, these items hold the lower part of the strut to the upper part of the strut. So it's very important you inspect to ensure the bolt head is here, the washer and the nut is on the other side. So as we're at the prop now, use caution. Never push or pull on the nose cone. It's thin aluminum, it's soft. We can be up here as we know the keys are on the dash. We've already established that. You inspect the condition of the prop to ensure the overall condition is good. No nicks, dents, gouges, scratches, no corrosion. This prop looks good. As I'm at the front, I'm gonna look inside the actual nacelle at the cooling fins to ensure there's no cracks, broken fins, whatever there might be. The air intake for your cabin heat, ensure that is clear, obstruction free. My rule of thumb is I know the keys are on the dash. I still do not want to turn this prop while you're here. It was told to me when I was very young starting my aviation career, treat the propeller like a loaded gun. You just don't play around with it even though the keys are on the dash. As you make your way to the other side of the engine, we'll open it up and inspect. Ensure that there's no fluid leakage or whatever chafing wires. I also like to check the brake fluid reservoir. And it is at the full line. Once you have determined this entire area is clear, free, whatever, no defects noted, close your nacelle. And then come around to your gas escalator fuel sump. This is the last point before it goes into your carburetor. So what you'll do is sump a little fuel in your jar. Inspect. I don't see any water in here. As you're down here, Inspect the three bolts on your landing gear, the three actual nuts. The other side, we talked about the heads of the bolts, and here we have the nuts and the washers. Overall condition, and ensure the valve cap is on your tire. Pressing forward, leading edge of your wings, you get to your fuel tank. Similar to the other side, you get under the wing, you inspect your brake pads, fluid leakage, overall condition, 
tires, sump your fuel, and if it's clear, pour it back in your tank. As you're pressing forward down the wing, we've already determined that our stall horn works. You all always want to ensure that you have the proper hardware installed or the hardware installed in general. Looking down under the wing, we've determined our P-dot tube, our P-dot heat works. You want to ensure the holes are not clogged. Your intake hole, your static port hole, and even at the back you have a drain hole in case water was to get inside the system. Ensure all your panels have the appropriate hardware and there's no damage noted. As you get to the wing tip, the same process as the other side. Ensure the supporting hardware is in, no damage is noted, everything is good and secure. Similar to the right wing, with the left wing, you inspect your piano hinges, all the supporting hardware, and again, if you raise this flap up, hold on to it to check that control rod. As we press down the wing, the flaps on the three points, previously noted. And you come to the empennage section. Here you want to look for twisting of it. Imagine taking a Coke can and someone twisting that to thin aluminum and it creases a little bit. And that's what you're looking for on your empennage. The overall structural integrity, as well as your antennas, your calm antennas your GPS antennas, your ELT antenna, the vertical stabilizer with all the supporting hardware. Now keep in mind, again, oftentimes this plastic cracks, which is fine as long as it's not excessive, as long as you don't feel it's a safety of flight issue. Because remember, you as a pilot, you're the PIC, you're the one in charge, so you make the go, no-go call. Pressing forward, you have the horizontal stabilizer leading edge, freedom of movement, aircraft ID tag, you want to ensure that the serial number and such are on the aircraft. And that's a big question FAA examiners like to ask. Well, tell me, where can you find the serial number on your aircraft? Right here on the ID tag. Pressing forward to the end. Plastic ends, use care and caution. And the overall condition of the skin, you want to ensure that the rivet heads are not popped, busted. There's a thing called a smoky rivet, and that's when friction takes place and it trails backwards. So if you see any trails of a, a grayish type graphite feeling item, that rivet head is loose and it's causing a disturbance in the airflow. Trim tab with the piano hinges on each point. I myself, as an ANPIA, I grab the actual trim tab and I push and pull on it very lightly to see how much play is in there. You should have very minimal play. If you have a lot of play, tell your mechanic. While you're here, I raise up the horizontal stabilizer and I inspect the supporting hardware and I look inside here to ensure that all the supporting hardware is in, the nut and the bolt are present. Now this trim tab hardware is very important, so it's a, you must ensure it's there. As you get to the back upper, the VOR antenna, overall condition of the skin, and the rudder with the supporting hardware. You have hardware in here, hardware here at the midpoint as well. Once you make it back around to the point where you initially started, take your checklist, ensure that you haven't forgot anything with the exterior summary. Once you've determined everything is good, exterior summary checklist complete. Now I'm Mike Friend again, the Director of Maintenance here at DNJ Aviation. Thank you so much for checking out our video and happy flying.